Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of IELTS Vocabulary. Today we are going to discuss about the environment. The environment. So one of the most common topics that comes up during the IELTS exam is about the environment. It's a very popular subject and you need to be able to write, read or talk about it during the exam. The words we are going to learn today should help you succeed. Let's talk about the causes and effects and the solution of the environmental challenges using some advanced vocabulary. Let's begin with the most talked about topic such as global warming which is a huge environmental issue. In fact, this particular issue is being talked about by many leaders all around the world. So what exactly is global warming? As you can see here, the earth is warming up using an electrical stove. What is global warming? Well, due to human actions, we observe the rise of average earth temperatures. It may sound like a nice shift for people living in Russia and Canada because those countries are extremely cold. They have freezing temperatures, but such climate change often triggers some serious negative consequences. Let's use that word in a sentence. World leaders launch an initiative to accelerate work on global warming. And as you might know, the Paris Accord was signed recently regarding this issue where a lot of the countries, they have decided to reduce their carbon emissions and other issues related to this. Global warming also has the potential to change climate. So oftentimes what happens, some areas it becomes much more colder, some areas becomes warmer, in some areas there is a lot of rainfall, in some areas there is almost no rainfall, which results in drought. So let's use that in this sentence. Global warming also has the potential to change rainfall and snow patterns, increase droughts and severe storms. Let's additionally define this word called droughts. Well, droughts actually means a very um, dry area due to lack of rainfall. So now most people think it's a period of hot and dry weather, but that's not completely true. It is a state or condition when human demands for water exceeds its natural availability. So what happens during the drought season for say, humans require a certain amount of water but they don't have enough. So a lot of times this happens even in countries like Bangladesh which is known for having a lot of rainfall that for months there will be no rainfall in the northern part of the country and the soil often um, breaks down. Like you can see cracks in the ground due to lack of moisture or water content. What consequences are we talking about? It's very likely that you've heard a lot about these issues such as melting glaciers as well. So as you know that the world temperature is increasing and a lot of ice is stored in um, the Arctic Ocean, the Antarctica and some other parts. So what's happening is due to this rise of temperature the ice is breaking down. Glaciers are large bodies of moving ice. The increase in mean temperatures has led to melting of most of the world's glaciers. So glaciers are these large bodies of moving ice. But what drives the increase in temperature? Greenhouse gases are a widely discussed source. Some of the greenhouse gases occur naturally, but human activity leads to release of enormous amounts of greenhouse gases. Let's go and use another word which is related to global warming. Population growth, deforestation and factor farming are creating excess greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and contributing to global warming. So what is deforestation? You see in some parts of the world, trees are being excessively cut down. So here's an example, like there is a clearing of the forest area where the trees have been cut down to use the logs. So deforestation is the clearing of trees without the intent of 
replanting them. So there will be no trees replanted within this area. One of the consequences of deforestation is the loss of biodiversity. So what is biodiversity? This is a great word. Biodiversity is the variety of all living things on earth which include plants, animals and microorganisms. Now we will continue with some new words associated with biodiversity. Many species within a forest ecosystem are endemic to that habitat. This means they are adaptive to the habitat. When their habitat is lost, it could lead to their extinction. So, for example, um, in Bangladesh, there is a mangrove forest and a lot of animals living there, uh, they have to rely on the ecosystem based on the different parts of the forest. So, what happens is, once you have a deforestation scheme in certain parts, those particular species can no longer survive. And since the ecosystem is linked, a lot of animals die out or become extinct. So here are three new words. The first one is extinction, which means that certain species no longer exist on the planet. The second word is habitat and means the natural environment of a plant, animal or another organism. And the third word is ecosystem and means any community of living and non-living things that work together. There are some other useful words and phrases which we might use such as endangered species. Endangered species are those which are considered to be at risk of extinction. For example, there are over 1300 species in the United States that are listed as threatened or endangered. Let's discuss some more terms related to climate change and the environment. The ozone layer. The ozone layer is a belt of naturally occurring ozone gas that sits above the earth and serves as a shield from the harmful ultraviolet radiation. So how different is this from uh, for say pollution? Unlike pollution, which has many types and causes, the ozone layer depletion has been pinned down to one major human activity.